happening? What's happening? The big K A K A K two gutter sleep with a cut up and turn on the big dog on the tongue. Now you already know what it is, man. Hey, R P the big dog. Y'all got us feeling the top way right now. We at the top about Big Quan. Rich homie Quan, we at the top about it now. Lie. Again. So we heard some reports there was a 911 call. I'm not going to put up. I'm not going to talk about that. But we do have some, I guess, speculation behind this cause of death. Now, I believe at this moment they're still doing an autopsy. So we'll eventually get the cause of death eventually. And then we will properly talk about it. But yeah, I'm not really, I don't want to talk about the 911 call. I'm not really going to put that in there. I do have some speculation that potentially he did have a drug issue and he could have passed off that we don't know what he was taking at the time so again i'm not gonna do that until we get the proper cause of death and we might have another video talking about that shit or whatever but anyways we're here to talk about um one of the last interviews he did and he was speaking on thug uh on a thug uh, reconciliation uh before he passed and we had to talk about it now if you don't know of course young thug and rich homie Kwan kind of popped out around the same time you know rich gang you know lifestyle one of the mega hits first song i heard both of them on i'm not gonna lie before i delve into both of them as solo artists to check out what they was doing at the time you know what i'm saying so with that being said you know and sure thug went on to be thug you know have his ysl label sign gunner and the rest is fucking history but again them boys had beef they had a falling out they had some issues and yeah again i don't know if it was street show whatever have you niggas picked a side niggas was really fucking with thug and kwan became quiet i believe i remember i was watching academic stream and he did say this i forgot that he did do an interview with academics and he said motherfuckers was fucking with him like wheezy and other people of that ilk i'm not trying to call out names or whatever happened i just remember him saying wheezy but like basically which is a producer you know wheezy out of here that dude you know what i'm saying but basically niggas wasn't really fucking with him that was fucking more with thug they wasn't really trying to give him beats niggas wasn't really trying to work with him you know what i'm saying and it got to that point where you know it kind of like quote his career now probably he was probably going through stuff as well like label stuff or whatever have you but it, it quote down his career i remember when thug got locked up or he wasn't as prominent yeah i seen rich homie trying to come back and he was getting a little bit of traction i was seeing him dropping some music he was doing this thing i wasn't really mad at it you know what i'm saying he was doing this thing because i was always sitting there like what the fuck happened to rich homie Quan? now me not being a nigga from atlanta and atlanta like they beefs don't really spill out into the mainstream a lot of niggas don't know these niggas had their issues or whatever but if you're in atlanta you know what's going on so of course we just like maybe he feel bad maybe having label troubles whatever have you we not really knowing like him and thug it could be some issues there apparently there was some street shit because again regardless of whatever have you if dude and he might be lying but i don't think he lying because at this point as much as you could you could say or call why is so uh woody a snitch the motherfucker a shooter we know that nigga shoot his shit he busts guns pops no diddy with that being said I don't think that nigga would lie about going to go shoot up his father's papa shop, but hey, that's just me. The motherfuckers in Atlanta, y'all can break that down for a nigga like me. Now, with that being said, of course, there were some issues there. He tried to come back, whatever have you. He wasn't as prominent. Yeah, yeah, you just hearing a lot of stuff, like, um, and one of the things that really spoke out to me, I know I'm supposed to really go into this, is um, Rallo and Quando Rondo. Quando Rondo's like, I don't usually do this, but motherfuckers don't give people flowers when they're here, which we say this all the time. You're going to see motherfuckers when they pass away. Oh, this is the text message we had. This is all this and that. People who didn't really rock with him, now they're giving their RIPs, even though that was fake. They chose Thug side and shit, you know. And I'm not saying they hated him, but they went with Thug, you know what I'm saying? So... It just seems fake, and he was just saying you should give people their flowers, just and just insinuating how much of a uh, sorry influence rich homie uh, Quan was on his career and stuff like that, and his QR and uh, uh, symbol or uh, is kind of like made off of rich homie Quan and the shit he was doing at the time. So again, just showing his love in a way. Also, you having Rollo there, um, not Rollo Rodriguez, Rollo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Fem America, I guess if I had to differentiate the two but or i could have said anyways whatever I had, you know who i'm talking about big rollo or rollo that was just locked up but basically 
Rallo sitting there not really giving a proper RP like, oh, we friends, I fuck with you. Like, hey, I'm glad we got over our differences when you were here. That was some real one, one ish. And a R I P. Hey, I will reach out if your family needs anything to help you. And that was it. He didn't sit here and be like, that was my dog, that was my homie, was in the trenches. Just like, we had our issues, we spoke about it, we made peace. If your family needs some shit, I got you. Just a real response. He didn't sugarcoat it and he kept it a buck. A lot of these motherfuckers out here, they faking like th these niggas been locked in for years, but they haven't did that shit. Especially, again, we said it all the time with the PNB Rock situation. You've seen PNB on the academics um, for the record podcasting. A lot of these niggas ain't fucking with him. He's went out verse from certain niggas. Niggas ain't really fucking with him. But when he died, I bet you a lot of them motherfuckers that were not really fucking with him because he wasn't super hot or wasn't super unpopular um, at the time. Basically, with that being said, I... What was I gonna say? Sorry, shit happening in the background. My apologies for the background. But basically, him not being popular at that time, people wasn't really too urgent to do the verse or do the feature for him. But when he passed, everybody was like, all right, oh, this my dog, all the text messages, all that. Yo, I miss Brody and all that. But that shit was not reciprocated, as you can see. But yeah, I mean, we had talk about it. We all know the industry fake. Certain niggas is just industry friends. They're not real friends. But hey, let's just go in and speak about this but anyways um let's see um let's see i'm just gonna skim through this i'm not gonna waste too much of your time um rich homie quite a strong collaborative bond with young thug one that eventually fell out of favor for relevant uh relevantly unknown reasons in fact just a few days before news of his passing broke he had expressed a willingness to have a conversation with thug to release more music together during an interview I heard you once say, uh, screaming, um, free thugger, right? The interviewer asked Rich Homie Kwan, is there any chance that at some point in the future, uh, e uh, either be unreleased music or whatnot, that we'll hear y'all on a song together again? Um, that I don't know, he responded, because we do have a lot of unreleased, we have a lot of music that hasn't been released, but who knows what the future holds. First and foremost, free thugger is free anybody that's locked up. It's free Lucci. It's a tough situation, so I try not to talk about it a lot. But I don't know what the future holds, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to have a conversation, and it will start from there. Which is factual, and it's more grown shit. I do respect that. Now, again, Lil Woody came out to say R.I.P. I didn't think that was genuine. I might do a video on that. I don't know. We'll talk about it a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's just a sad situation. I do, I don't know. I feel like, again, I'm speculating. I don't know. I feel like that bridge is done. I'm not saying they hate each other, but maybe Thug might be sad because, again, you and this nigga came up together. So you might reflect like, bro, we was beefing off some dumb shit. But even if they had that conversation and Rich Homie was here today, I don't think music would have came out of it. I just think they would have just been like, maybe it could have cooled off the beef. But I, I really don't know. I feel like a, a lot happened, and especially with uh, Donovan Thomas, um, pause, no diddy, who uh, I don't know if he was Rich Homie's manager, but he was cool with Rich Homie. He was like, cool with Lucci or whatever, and he passed allegedly Young Thugs Peoples. Had something to do with that. Allegedly, we don't 100% know. But yeah, so I don't know. When, I, when niggas die, it's just hard to reconcile. I know that for sure, but I don't know. I really don't know. But it does suck that. Rich homie Kwan did pass, and he at least before he did pass, he did at least want to have that conversation to see if they could just clear the air and squash all that. But I, a lot of that come with maturity though. And again, we don't remember like these niggas been out. I don't know when last out dropped, like early 2014, 2013, around there. So like, bro, we in 2024, at least been 10 years, at least been a decade. You know what I'm saying? And that's when they was like popping. So imagine them like just trying to make shit shake in Atlanta before that with the music shit too so and these niggas probably knew each other for more than a decade so hey man it sucks it's a, it's a fucked up situation but like yeah R.I.P. Rich Homie Kwan free thought that's, that's really it that's really all I gotta say about this situation what do y'all feel comments down below links in the description
So your friend in the neighborhood, KA, sign off for today. Before I even get off, I forgot to say my condolences to the friends and family of Rich Homie Kwan. Again, also the fans, but mostly your friend, the family and fans. He had like two kids and stuff like that. Like, again, we really don't speak about how, like, the, this dude, maybe as minuscule as he is to fans as a performer and an artist, how he changed a lot of people's lives that they're not in the position they was in beforehand and they're not doing negative things to the community or whatever have you so a lot of the time we don't really think about that we just like oh they're not popular anymore they're trash but yeah Kwando was right you got to give them people their flowers man like i said my condolences to the family like, ain't easy losing a loved one so hey, that's really all i gotta say but i'm gone shalom zoom peace gang all right